All right, guys. So today I just wanted to look at the layout components in Bricks and just explain it for some of the new users. I know there's other videos on this and there's plenty of good information on it, but there's still new users still get confused. Um, and if we look in Bricks itself in the editor, we can see under the layout section, we've got four main layout elements. And there's a little question mark, sorry, an information icon up here. If you click on that, it takes you to a really good information page on Bricks, which does explain all of this really, really well. But that's a lot of information, a lot of reading, a lot of understanding for someone who is new to this type of uh, thing or new to HTML, CSS, etc. Um, there's a lot to cover here. But what we're going to talk about is these definitions here and show what that actually means. So effectively, we've got four layout components. We have a section, which is semantically an HTML section, which I'll show you. Uh, we've got a container, which is actually a div set to whatever the box width of your settings are. So they give an example of 1100 pixels, which I think is the default in bricks. Uh, and then we've got a block which is a div set to flex with 100% width of the parent container. And then we've got a div, which is a plain div with no additional styling added to it, no additional settings from bricks. It is a raw HTML div to do whatever you want to build it up with your settings from the beginning. So the, it sounds complicated, but it's actually pretty simple. And if we look at the builder, what we see here is we've got a section, a container, a block, and a div. Of these four, only the section and the div are actual HTML elements that are represented. So I'll show you what I mean by that. If we look at the actual, so what we've built here, if we look at that and we use our Chrome inspector, and we have a look at our section. So there's the section there. And you can see down in the inspector that it's an HTML section element, right? The next thing we've got is a container. So this container element here, but it's not a container here, it's a div. And the div has a class of Brix or BRXE container, which turns it into what is called a container in bricks, which we'll show you. Then the next one is a block. So this element here, the block, again, it's a div. There is no such thing as a HTML block element. So it is a div with a class that turns it into what bricks have called a block. Okay. And then we've got the div element. So this last element here, the div, which is a purely unstyled div, is actually a div. So of these four, only the section and the div are actual HTML element representations. The other two, the container and the block, are actually divs with some styling on it to make them behave in a particular way. So that's where it gets really confusing. So page builders like to abstract some of these um, terms, so things like sections, rows, columns, blocks, um, all that sort of stuff. They extract that to something that you can visually see in an editor that kind of makes sense, rows, columns, all that sort of stuff. But HTML itself does not have rows, columns, etc. Okay, so you create those using CSS layouts with divs. Okay, so that's, that's, the, uh, that's what we're going to cover today. Now, if we have a look back at our page builder here, the, and we're using bricks, and I love the way bricks have done this. Uh, it has very, very minimal abstraction. Many page builders uh, are very abstracted. So what they call, for example, a section, when you add the section to the editor, you don't actually get a section. You get a div called a section, and then you might get an inner wrapper inside that, and then some other wrapper inside that. Bricks does not do that. A section is a section. A container is a div with some properties, a block is a div with some properties. A div is a raw div. So I love the way Bricks have done this, and I'll show you why. So in my first example here, what I've done is I've got a very simple example. I've got a section, a 
container, a block, a div, and then some text inside that. So I'm just going to show you each of these in action. So that section at the top here, and what I've done is put an extra class on these to put some borders around so we can see where they are. Uh, and what we're going to do is look at this in the front end. So in the front end here, if we look at our section, there's our brick section. And there is, pretty apart from my marker on there, there's not much on it. There's some padding on there. With This is actually, I'm using automatic CSS, uh, which automatically adds a bunch of this stuff here. Um, if you don't have automatic CSS, you won't see anything here. You have to style up the um, section yourself. So here's the brick section. It turns it into a flex container and aligns items to center. So you don't set any alignment up. Your alignments go to the center, like uh, down here. Actually, let me just refresh that. So these titles here are center aligned because they're in a section by itself. And the default brick settings is to say align those to the center, set the display to flex, and the direction to column. Um, and that's pretty much what that section is doing. Okay, so that's very, very straightforward. A little bit of overriding the browser settings, but I'm okay with that. So um, that's what a section does. Now, the next one down is the container. If you look at the container, so that's the container here, which is containing all of that content. So if we roll our mouse over, you can see on the left and the left hand side and the right hand side, we've got our orange indication from uh, Chrome, uh, which is margin. So it's showing us some margin on the outside there. So this extra padding we're getting on the section, that's, I shouldn't actually use the CSS for this. So that padding there is coming from automatic CSS, not from bricks. Uh, but then our uh, container here, we've got some padding and we've got some uh, margin. So the margin on the left and the right is auto. And what it does, if we look at our styles here, so apart from the stuff I've added here, let's look at the standard brick stuff. So it said, say, standard bricks element is a max width of 100%. That's just a default setting. So here's our container. We're going to align items to the flex start. So that's the top because we're using a column. We're setting it to flex, flex direction column, and we've got margin left and right of auto. So that's what we were seeing when we saw the orange on the sides there. And we're setting our width to 1100 pixels. Now, again, I'm using automatic CSS, which actually overrides some of this. So um, if we don't have automatic CSS, that would not be overridden. So that is the box width that's been set uh, in bricks for our container element. Okay, so that's pretty much what a container does. It is a div, which is set to flex uh, as a column, and then um, puts margin on the side so that the maximum width of that container is the uh, what you want for your box width or your page width uh, for the website. So that's a container. If we go down further to the block, there's our block there. The block is sitting inside that container at the moment. And that block has some padding around the outside, which I've put on there. Uh, by default, it doesn't. So it has some padding around the outside. And if we look at the brick settings, we're saying align items to flex start. Display flex, flex direction is column, and the width is 100%. So that's just saying it's a flex uh, column layout, and it's 100% of its parent container. So that's the, if you look at the green on the sides there, and then we go to the section uh, above it, you can see in the section, see the edges there where the orange finishes? That's where our block finishes because it's 100% of the parent width. So the only difference between a block and a div is that it sets the flex, uh, display to flex, flex start, column, and 100%. So that's all done for you. So if you want to use a div and you're going to use it as flex, add a block. And then you don't have to set these settings. You can Or, or you can add a div and then set these how you want. Now the next one is the div, which is sitting inside it. And if we look at that, and we look at bricks, looking for brick styles here, so there's a max with 100%, there is nothing set on that div. So we style that div as we want. So if I went back to that div, and I want it to be the same as a block, I would have to go to the content, I'd have to set the display to 
uh, flex. I'd have to set the uh, column and align. Uh, da, 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 da. Which one of these is? I think it's the main axis. It is aligned to start, and that's going to set it to a flex column. Uh, and that's still not right because we've got to set the width. So it's flex. Line start, and then we have to go to the style layout, and we have to set the width to 100%. Okay, so now we've changed our settings on our div to be pretty much the same as a block. So if you wanted a 100% wide uh, flex column, you'd add a block instead of a div, then you don't have to worry about setting these settings here. So that's why they have them. So the, the four different um, uh, layouts, so the section's obvious, the containers to get your bogs with, block is if you want a, uh, a div that's already flex, already column, ready to go and 100% wide, use a block. If you want a raw unstyled div, use a div. And that's as simple as that. That's that's what they're for. Okay. Now, that's the simple explanation of how to use these. But it gets even cooler than that. Even cooler than that with bricks. So I'm going to come down to this next section where I've actually created an unordered list using a div widget. So if we go down to there. We go to our container the standard container. I'll just put a marker around the outside of it and that's it. There's nothing set on that container. Uh, that's just so I can box it in the middle there. Go to our div here. So I've got a basically a div widget and then drag it onto my structure here. So that's a div. We go into HTML tag and change that tag to be an unordered list, a UL. How easy is that? Right? Now, the Next one down is the LI, and we've just done the same thing. We've got a div, and we've stuck it there, and then we change that custom tag to an LI, uh, and then we just stuck some basic text under that and then duplicated this. What we end up with on the DOM is not a div. We get a UL, LI, LI. So this can be whatever you want. So you can construct whatever DOM structure you want by using raw layout blocks. So that could be um, any one of these. So you could well, typically you wouldn't use the section or the container, but either a block or a div, you can turn that into whatever you want. You can also change the tag on these. I don't can't think of a use case where that would make sense, uh, but um, certainly on these it does. So there we go. So just change those. And that gave us this structure down here. Now the next line down, I've done exactly the same thing, but instead of using a div element, I've used a block element. So I've just moved a block to there, uh, made that a UL, uh, duplicated that, made that an LI, um, and then just duplicated that, that whole uh, LI block there. So we've got two, make sure I named that incorrectly, that should be LI. And LI. I think I did the same up here, yep. So it's a it's a UL, then an LI, then an LI. But because it's a block, it behaves differently. So this is a div, and I've just got a UL, which I can see my border around, and I've got two LIs, which I can see borders around. When we use blocks instead of divs, our UL, so this section here, goes full width, and the LIs also go full width. Okay, so we don't have to change any settings if we want that full width. We just use blocks instead of divs. And we get this kind of structure here. Now, that's not exactly what we want. But let's see the power of this. If I go back to, I'm going to start with this uh, block structure here. If I go to my UL, all right, and I go to my, I'm just going to style it at the ID level here. I wouldn't normally do that. You'd normally use a class just so I can demonstrate this. So we go to the hit to the um, yeah, UI level, and we want all sides length, we want no margin, and we want no padding. Okay, so we got rid of our margin and our padding on the UL, so now it just looks like a standard layout. All right, now, 
because our block is a sorry our ul is a started as a block we've got all the flex settings on here so if we want a row gap here we've got a flex column all we have to do is add a row gap so i'm just going to use a number here i'll just put uh two two em that's a bit much so let me just go one m so i got one m row gap between these two here now so if i just duplicate that ally i've actually got a list now so a screen reader will get to this and read that as an unordered list list item one list item two list item three but it looks like a layout where we've got a single column with three rows and some spacing in between them how easy is that that is unbelievably good isn't it and that's just using the bricks ui now let's have a look at what we've created so that's it there so the structure is exactly the same as what we had before the only thing we've done is on that ul we've changed some settings in bricks to get rid of our padding and our margin and we set a row gap that's all we had to do how easy is that? That's unbelievably easy. All right, now let's see if we try and do that the same with the one above it, which is done with divs. So if this is a div. We've used the div element for this. So let's go to this one and we don't have any row gap. Why don't we have a row gap? Because it's a block. We'd have to manually set that to flex, manually set that to a column, manually go down here and then put in our row gap of 1M. That gives us our M, but we're still not 100% width. So we need to go to style, go to our width, and set that to 100%. So we just had to do all those things because we used a div instead of a block. All right, so isn't it smarter to just use a block in the first place? All right, now we've got some padding and margin issues. So we're just going to go to zero on that. And get rid of our margin as well as our padding as well. And we still got our list item to get rid of so now we have to go to our custom css and we have to do a root and i think it's list style type none okay so now we've got it rid of our list style Oh, what's he doing? What are you doing to me, Bricks? There we go. Okay, so what automatically happened here, I had to go into my UL here, had to go into the display, set it to flex, had to set it to a direction, a column. I haven't even done the other axis align, which is by default as well. Then set my row gap, then go to my style, set the layout, and then add some custom CSS to get rid of the list. So I had to do all those things because I didn't use a block. Okay, now we still have these allies here are still not blocks either. So, I mean, that looks okay, but we might want to actually uh, have some flex properties on that as well. So we need to turn that into a flex block as well. So we might have to go to the UL here and go to content. We might have to change that display from a list item to flex let's make this a flex column as well let's make it a row whatever you want okay now i prefer the second method i prefer just sticking a block there because it's already set up and ready to go and let's actually undo this and redo it from the beginning so i'm going to get rid of that container and i'm going to do it here show you how quick it is so i'm just going to add a container okay in that container i'm going to add a block that block didn't go in the right place put this on that container got the block inside that block we're going to uh, actually just change that here so i'll make that my ul and all i'm going to do here is on my html tag custom make it a ul okay i'm going to duplicate that make that my ally Okay, and then we're going to stick a text, basic text inside there. Here's our text. All right, and we're going to now duplicate our ally. Do it a couple times. 
Okay, and let's say now we want some spacing. We go back to our UL and we add some row gap of 1 EM. There we go. Still got a problem here because on our UL, we have some padding on the side and some margin that we don't want as well, which you can't see in the editor here. So we've got our UL style uh, under the layout. We will link everything, get rid of our padding, link everything, get rid of our margin. And we've got a standard list now. And these are all full width with our row gap. Right, so let's say we want to do something a little bit different with this list here. We want that to be some columns or in a, in a grid. So instead of doing uh, what we do here is instead of putting a basic text on there, we can actually turn that ally into a grid. Okay, let's do that now. So I'm going to turn this ally into a grid. So we got content. Okay, and on that one, we're going to set our display to a grid. And we're going to put a, let's put a gap of say 0 0.5. 0.5 M. Uh, let's put grid turn back. Let's say we wanted to do three columns. So I'd say repeat uh, three. Uh, I'll just do simple one FR. I wouldn't normally do this. You'd normally do a little bit more to, to this to, to make it work well. So we've got a repeat three one FR. Okay, we've got a three column grid now on an ally. Let's get rid of these other two. Mess it up. Okay, so let's add another basic text, and then next add a heading, maybe whatever you like. Let's stick a heading there. First one. So here we go. Oh, I put that in the wrong place. I did. Okay. So on this one LI, we now have a three column grid because we set that LI's display to be grid, bit of a spacing and told it to have three columns, all right? So now if we duplicate that LI now, we've got another row here and we've got some row gap there. So let's say we go back to a year ago, we want more spacing there, make it 2M. Now we've got two EM spacing between these. So we ended up with this structure here. We end up with a we end up with a UL, single UL. So screen reader gets to this and it goes, I've got a list here. Okay, list item one is this list here. And then we can start reading the content, which got a heading. Uh, we've got a div here, which is our basic text. We've got another div here, which is our basic text. And that's one list item. So you can imagine if this was a loop. If you had a bricks query loop, all you need is this one li here. And then you can turn that into a query loop. Okay, so just simply by grabbing that, going into your content, turning it into a query loop, selecting the query type you want, uh, putting in all your properties in there, and now you've just turned that ally into a table of uh, rows and columns. So it is incredibly powerful. I'm really, really liking the way Bricks have done this, uh, but understanding the fundamentals that of what these actually are. Section's obvious. Understanding these three, the container, block, and div, I think it's fundamental to getting this right. Um, once you understand those, then you can apply your grids and flex and whatnot to get the kind of layouts you want. Uh, but these fundamentals of what these are, I think is the starting point and you need to get those, you need to really understand those first before you can understand how to use them in a uh, layout. So hopefully that makes sense. Um, the documentation here, certainly from Bricks, covers all of this. Uh, it does it in a pretty good way, but it is a lot of uh, pictures and, and, uh, and words. Um, hopefully seeing it in action uh, makes it a little bit easier to understand. So yeah, so I'll leave it at that and uh, hopefully you like this sort of thing.